Oh. I just showed Mr. where the poop always is in this bed. Whatever it is hops up, digs here, takes a shit. We think it's a cat. I'm pretty sure it's a cat. Flies are looking for it. Yeah, now I'm going to um, water this bed. This is my round zucchini. It's not doing so hot, but the one in the pot is, so it's okay. have my string beans. These outer leaves are doing some weird stuff. Here's Benjol. That's a sugar beet, but I might pull it. My okra popped up here and here on either side. I have Moringa here. It's going to do much better once I pull her up. And here. My string beans aren't doing much of anything. I think I have to put things in this, this bed already grown to a certain extent. And I, except for the carrots, I need to direct sell those. And I'll know that for next year. Here's some beans. I had wing bean over here, long bean, and uh, kaskia, snap bean, snap bean, or whatever. Look like it might be growing out like a pole bean. So this might actually be, this is Buffy. She finally peeking up out the dirt far enough where I can water her without drowning her. If that makes any sense to y'all. I kind of transplanted her early. I am still learning, you know, so one of the things you want to do is transplant is wait until your plants have come up out of your cup a good four to five inches. I'm going to say five inches before you transplant them. This only this was only a, a inch or two old before I transplanted it. I was in a hurry, such a hurry to get it in there. This vase is doing okay. Actually, my red onions. I'm going to come and harvest this one. Vars. Blue. Blue's really ha uh, a lot happier today because I gave her, I gave both of them a half a gallon of uh, <laughs> acid, uh, of acidity. Buffy, she's happy right there. And more onions. Yeah, those I need to harvest. Yeah, okay, battery. We're just gonna take a look at what's uh, coming along, I guess. Harvestable shit. This is, uh, these are the onions. Okay. This is Buffy. She's well above the soil level now. This is Rose, Miss, Mr. Kilter. Kilter dead. <laughs> just share. She's not happy, but she's surviving. Kahunas. Little Viol is on the corners. Hazel and Jolly. Hazel's in front, Jolly back here. You can't see that. I don't go through that. Here's Jolly by herself. These are my Tom Thumb peas. I'm very excited. They're getting me ready. They're getting ready to give me seeds. So I have some from seeds from all these pods so i said that like that that shit's a lot i probably have three seeds per pod i have a couple of verbena i need to go get from ins to bring out here i'll show you anyway uh this is garlic and onions i only have like three onions in here actually four this one's coming up I'm probably gonna end up pulling it anyway these three onions the uh back half is garlic I don't know if this double stalk implies that there's another garlic bulb right next to it or not, but I have a few like that. Hazel's girls are starting to show up for the party. You can see the little sprouts here. Kahuna bed. I guess I can't call it the kahuna bed if the brick bed has a lot has several kahunas in it as well. Brandy, and I put her in this pot i actually put a healthier version of her in the pot because the other one was was really struggling another example of you needing to let a plant get a certain size before you up pot it you need to let it uh, reach out into its little container so that when it gets into its bigger one 
it will continue to thrive. Uh, this is the brown zucchini. I did see a, fem a fruit hazel. This candy. I'm letting her get a little. She actually can take a drought and does does okay with it. So I'm trying to let her dry out for a little while. These are a bunch of starts, half of which I thought were a wrap, but they're still popping up. This one, I dug my finger into it, and the seed was germ had germinated. So it was just waiting to pop above the soil. This one is just ringing around itself, this Moringa. And she is Moringing herself around herself. <laughs> These are a couple of uh, sweet cherry red peppers and a concagua. I'm um, thinking about putting those in the brick bed somewhere. I don't know where. These are tomato starts that I didn't have anywhere to put, and I don't have the guts to throw them away because if something goes awry with my current plant, then I'll have a backup. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, salad bed is doing well. We had the first salad last night. I will insert a picture. And uh, it was some kind of delicious, girl. So I knew I was gonna make the salad. So yesterday I got, I started thinking about what I wanted to put in the salad. Mr. doesn't eat tomatoes, right? fine for him so what I did was I got the salad together I mean not the salad together because I made sure I watered and fed because everything was growing by 50% every day so I said okay the day after tomorrow mister gets the first big salad I wanted to share it with his family but they'll have plenty of salad later in the season you know as we continue on so the next day um, I watered everything and I let the salad grow all day because I figured we would have it in the evening, more food, right? Before I harvested the salad, I went in and I prepared the fixings. Shaved a couple of carrots. I got some thin, super thin slices of red onion and super thin slices of red pepper since Mr. doesn't do tomatoes, right? So I got all those things and I sprinkled them in the salad, oh, beautifully I might add. And I put some Parmesan and Romano, cause normally who puts that kind of cheese on that salad? Nobody. So I sprinkled a little uh, cho uh, chop, uh, I sprinkled a little shaved off the block, Parmesan, Romano, and Asiago. And I just sprinkled a little of that across there. And then I had a big old slab of steak seasoned salmon. So good. And it wasn't even the printout salmon either. I could tell we got a, a slab of the OG salmon. It was so good. So fresh. And when I tell you Mr. fucked up that whole salad and it was a salad big enough for two people. He fucked up that whole salad and it was delicious. And he was still scraping the bottom. You know how the little um, carrots and oh and also sh very thinly shaved cucumbers in there too girl i did it i did that okay miss is thinking about having pizza i'm here for it it's only noon but that gives me that implies that we're probably gonna just chill today and enjoy a movie together and that i'm down with so yeah here's the salad bed with these beautiful burgundy leaf lettuce I shared some of these with my girl. You're welcome. You're welcome. Some of y'all have this, though. I've seen them in y'all's garden. You know what? I'm going to send some to my other girl, too, because she in Georgia. Oh, just a little bit about my salad bed. Y'all know I originally put the string beans in here to compensate for healthy soil, but I don't know that that helps. <laughs> okay. So, but I do like the way they look at the ends of the bed, so I may either continue to grow them or since I have beans growing everywhere, I may actually turn those two ends into uh, pepper plants. 
if I can, uh, my small, depending on how large or small this sweet cherry red pepper, or delicious this sweet cherry red pepper is, because even if it's not good, I can use one of the other small mini bells. She's a Merlot. And this is Paris. I've heard a couple of you guys mention her, so y'all have her as well. So what you see here, I don't know if this is it or not. This might be my regular old spinach. But what you see here and sprinkled in different places is my Virafle spinach. So basically in my uh, salad bed, I have primarily, I have other varieties. I have uh, Four Seasons, Romaine, both red and green Romaine. I have Caesar. I actually don't need Caesar because Romaine does the same thing. <laughs> But anyway, I have several different, I have like about seven different varieties of lettuce in here. But the primary varieties uh, for the heat of the summer are the Virafle spinach because I wanted a heat tolerant spinach. And the Paris Island is leaf lettuce that is also heat tolerant. And it is proven to be just that so far, even though we don't, we haven't had any smoldering situations. And in the back here, I have some inappropriately planted bok choy. You know, choy likes only cool weather. But I decided to put some back there because I wanted something bigger in the back. But I knew I didn't want collards because collards roots eventually get rambunctious. And I need the root space for all my salad greens. So, yeah. I'm just brainstorming really. Ugh, this is so beautiful to me. I just stare. I just stare. And actually the only well y'all know, y'all are gardeners. I love how uh soft and not rubbery, but it's almost a rubbery suppleness that spinach has. I really love it. I really love it. I love this burgundy leaf number. Ah, oh, can't wait. Please germinate and give me a bunch of melons. Thank you. <laughs>